you go for an education loan the bank is charging you 11 to 12 percent but rbi report says that there are 599 corporates with loan outstanding more than 100 crores each their rate of interest is less than 5 percent so you are affecting the ordinary depositors on say and the small borrowers education loans sme borrowers they are being charged more to show that the income is more for the bank narendra modi government has always prided itself on what it calls massive achievements or milestones in the banking sector now if you remember bringing back black money was an integral part of the 2014 campaign later after jan dhan accounts were introduced the prime minister many of his cabinet colleagues kept insisting how this step was a milestone they brought many other policies over the years as well and according to them the banking sector in india is now at its best after years or maybe even decades of corruption but is this really the case to understand this we have with us somebody who has been studying the banking sector who has been working in the banking sector for many many decades we have with us thomas franco former general secretary of the all india bank officers confederation and convener of citizens first thank you so much for joining us okay. right uh, you recently wrote an article actually which in some sense seeks to bust many of these myths about you know a banking sector which is now different from what it was all these years according to the government this is an efficient banking sector this is an accessible banking sector this is a banking sector that is truly fulfilling the needs of the people so before we go into some of those specifics how would you respond to these claims see first of all the amount of loans written off in the last 10 years it is more than 15 lakh crores the last 5 years alone it is more than 10 lakh crores after writing off so much how do you e- claim that the banking sector is doing well the non performing assets is a cycle now they are hiding the non performing asset by reintroducing some of the schemes which were taken up by the reserve bank of india like restructuring of assets so large number of loans are kept hidden which ones again will turn up as uh, non performing assets soon secondly in spite of so much of write off how these banks are making profit huge profit that is because of the income earned from the difference between the deposits and advances to just an example of state banks 2023 results their cost of deposit is only 3.7% and yield on advances is 7% now if the cost of deposit is 3.7% what does this mean the ordinary depositors they are getting very little interest there was a time banks were paying even up to 14% interest on the fixed deposits now with this average 6 7 so you are taking money from these small depositors lending it to the corporates chief but at the cost of the depositor who is earning very meager income right. current account there is no interest and every ngo every company has to compulsorily have only current account savings deposits 4% interest so actually this income should have gone to the depositors secondly the cost of loans you go for an education loan the bank is charging you 11 to 12% but rbi report says that there are 599 corporates with loan outstanding more than 100 crores each their rate of interest is less than 5% so you are affecting the ordinary depositors on side 
and the small borrowers, the education loans, SME borrowers, they are being charged more to show that the income is more for the bank. And again, if you see the income of State Bank of India, a bank is supposed to collect deposits and lend. The major income should come from the loans. Now, the result says that 26 percent of the income is shown as other income, maybe service charges, maybe inspection charges, some amount invested outside. Earlier, banks used to lend almost 95 percent of the deposits as loan. Now, state banks CD ratio, credit deposit ratio is only 73 percent. That means, you are giving this money as deposit somewhere else to earn some income instead of giving more loans. Right. And such a huge bank with 44 lakh depositors, the number of SME accounts is only 19 lakhs. Where is the 43 crore and 19 lakhs? And uh, Modiji has claimed that we have done so much for Back. SMEs. SMEs are, MSMEs are suffering a lot. Then, if you see the loans under the government sponsored scheme, in the last seven years, 43 crore entrepreneurs have been given loan under the Mudra loan scheme. The number of households in the country is almost same. If there are so many enterprises, where do you see those enterprises in the country? How many of them are surviving? They are all going to become non-performing assets. Only advantage is that now there is a credit guarantee scheme. So, out of the loan given, 75 percent, if it is not a quick mortality, that is if it does not go bad quickly, the banks will get some recovery from the insurance company not from the borrower. Right. And the economic situation is not conducive for the growth of the small entrepreneurs. You were mentioning about the Jandan account. The first year, when just 10 crore new accounts were opened under the Jandan scheme, the Prime Minister himself announced that 99 percent of the borrow, uh, sorry, uh, population has been already covered under the bank accounts. Now, they claim that we have 50 crore Jandan accounts. So, where from they came? It is all just uh, reporting. Hmm. Every new account which is opened, whether the first fellow has already an account or not, or maybe in some other bank, it is all sh shown as Jandan account, Jandan account. And due to minimum balance charges, number of accounts are getting closed. So, this is not an achievement in the banking sector as claimed. And uh, Mr. Modi has also mentioned about scams, that hmm. there were a lot of scams. Also, I think the black money, the claims of returning of black oh. money from abroad, which is the <laughs> biggest promise, in fact. I think that is <laughs> the campaign promise that resonated the most, one of the ones that resonated the most in 2014. Yes, but that is, I can say it is a fraud on the people. There was also a promise of giving 15 lakh <laughs> per, fee, per head out of the black money which oh, will be oh. 2016 monetization. Everything came back. We, we do not know where is that black money. And uh, people were affected and that affected the economy, it affected the MSMEs and uh, many of them have not recovered back. So, it is the black money demonetization has been really a fraud on the people and nothing has been achieved out of that. So, now coming back to this uh, MSMEs and other loans, again the corporates are getting the major portion of the credit. State bank alone, and the largest bank, so I am analyzing only that. 9.8 lakh crore has been the advance given to corporates alone. 
that is total advances, 30 percent has gone to few corporates alone. The agriculture borrowers, the MSMEs, housing loan, of course, there is good. Though state bank is number one in education loan, it is number one in housing loan, it is number one in SAG loan. In spite of that, there is a scope for state bank to give much more. They have a huge network. Now, instead of increasing the network, number of branches, there are 21,000 branches, whereas there are 76,000 customer service points where somebody is sitting there doing some services, they cannot give loan, they cannot collect it up, open account. Their role is very limited and they get a small commission and out of that commission 30 percent goes to a national business correspondent. It is an exploitation of the youth. If the public sector banks were to recruit more and also increase the number of branches, there has would have been a tremendous growth in the economy itself. Another example is per employee profit. State Bank of India in 2013-14 per employee profit was 4, and 4 crore 91 lakhs. Now it is 2100 crores. So it is more than four times. But the staff strength remains the same. It is going down. So you are not recruiting more people because of which the service in the public sector is under criticism. People are not happy with the public sector and they are forced to go to the non-banking financial companies. And now they have brought in a new scheme called the co-lending in which again State Bank of India has entered into an agreement with Adani Capital who does not have any experience in banking. And they will sold applications for the agriculture borrowers, MSME borrowers, which will not come back finally. So, the banking system actually is under tremendous pressure. We are camouflaging things. After some time, the reality will once again be seen. Then again, if a new government comes, they can keep blaming that it is on this because of the banks, which were lending left and right. Modi ji claims that there was phone banking. Hmm. So, that is one of the other things. The government claims that with phone banking, for instance, another big step in accessibility, now even those who may not be that literate or those who may be struggling for, uh, you know, even everyday people have far more access. So, does that uh, tally as they say? No, that is the digital t banking they are talking about. Hmm. See, 26 percent of the population is still illiterate. Yes, the digital banking has attracted the uh, youth, but an injustice has been done to the banks by opening up this sector first to the outsiders. Like you know that everywhere, though state bank has an app called Yono app, people are using the GPay or PTM, Paytm app. Google does not have a banking license, but what they are doing is banking and they have access to every account of every bank. Is it not an injustice? If this would have been given to the public sector banks, it would have been better. Right. And GPay in other countries, they have started charging. Now it is free. So once they reach a peak, they will start charging also. But another type of phone banking which Modi ji is talking is that those days during the UPA, some people from the high offices okay. will just phone people and banks will immediately give loan without any security. And that is humbug. Then or now, banks do not follow that kind of instructions I have seen in the banking sector for so long. We follow certain procedures and our disciplinary proceedings are very strong. You do not follow the procedure, you are sent out. So who will take that risk? So 
today actually what is happening is that the finance minister she has meeting with the chairman and managing directors almost every month and she tells them what is to be done the pressure on the mudra loans and the other government schemes is put on the people and because of that the bank services have gone down because that is not remunerative so they achieve certain target and the rest of that they go to the corporates right so the country needs actually more loans to the farmers more loans to the students more loans to the msmes that is not happening today 30% of the loans in the sector financial sector is given by the non banking financial company at one point of time banks were prevented from lending to others who will use it for on lending but now on lending is happening under the compulsion of reserve bank of india and also the co lending is taking place this is affecting the common man which is not being talked about right the interest rate an mfi or a non banking financial company takes loan from the public sector bank or even private sector banks at 11% or 12% and they lent up to 36% and now that ceiling has also been removed they can lend up to more than 36% also so what is happening as i said the corporates are getting cheap loans and the common man is paying three times four times of that interest rate which becomes very difficult for them and they find it difficult to repay then they lose every asset so this is an injustice to the majority of the population in the country absolutely and the other question i also wanted to ask was one of the other claims was regarding the efficiency because of mergers and though that process that was initiated a few years ago so at this point how do you evaluate that uh, process see merger was not warranted that time the only th- claim the finance minister was saying that we are going to create few global banks that does not uh, matter in any way actually becoming a global bank but presently even state bank of india is not within the top 20 in terms of assets it is 41 and among the fortune 500 companies it is 221st position no other bank has reached that level also in fact what has happened is number of branches have been reduced number of staffs have been reduced so people are moving out for example after the merger of state bank of tranco when a lot of people left the state bank system and went to the private bank kerala has many private banks so that kind of a shift has taken place and the merger has actually affected the larger number of people again the public sector banks which from 28 it is 12 now they are once again concentrating on the larger borrowers instead of the small borrowers so merger has not helped the country or the people at large Right. and finally just also i think slightly shifting to another sector which is the government really is touting is promoting is claiming that its its contribution to the country is the cooperative sector and it's closely connected in various ways to banking as well so i also wanted you to sort of uh, give us your evaluation of what is this push or what are the what is this push that the government is doing and whether it's successful what is the agenda as part of that see so this government is for one nation one language so like that now everything under the cooperative sector also they were going to bring it under one umbrella now recently they have introduced the multi state cooperative bill cooperative sector in our country is doing quite well for long so 1916 it started the credit cooperatives their membership is 20 crores so they are actually serving the downtrodden people at the grassroots level the number of primary agriculture cooperative banks is almost 1 lakh 
and their credit is, as on 2018 itself, they were giving uh, 14 lakh crores, which is much more than any public sector bank gives. So, now what they are trying to bring under control is, so far the cooperatives are under the state sector. So, they want to bring in an umbrella, so that they can control everything. Because the outreach is too high, the number of people in the cooperative sector is quite high. The large cooperatives in the milk sector, the sugar, all of them today is not under the control of the ruling party. So, there is a way they want to manipulate and bring it under their control, so that they can get political gain out of it. They could not uh, break the farmers' agitation. Now, through the cooperatives, they can directly go to the farmers. They can manipulate things. So, there is a game plan. Otherwise, why a home minister should be made into a uh, minister for the cooperatives also? And we know his background what happened in the Ahmedabad cooperative during demonetization and all. So, there is a huge game plan which so far nobody is looking at it closely. But unless we understand that states react, already federalism is in question. States have to start reacting. See, Kerala is one state where the cooperatives and cooperative banks are doing excellently well. They have created a Kerala State Cooperative Bank, which is competing with the public sector banks. Why they started that? Because public sector banks were not giving small credit. Their credit deposit ratio was very low. In spite of they appealing in the uh, state level apex meetings, there is a apex body which reviews every three months. In spite of that, they were not doing it. So, naturally they started the state cooperative bank and that is doing well. And all the state cooperative banks in the Kerala are excellently doing well. District level cooperative banks, primary agriculture cooperative. So, all this they want to get some control. So, the states have to react, people have to react, so that they are not taken over by again in some dubious way they are brought under the control of this union government. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas Franco, for speaking to us, for I think giving us a very detailed instance by instance, issue by issue breakdown of some of the claims that the government is, you know, putting forward. Be very useful information, I think, for the viewers. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. And that's all we have time for today. We'll be bringing more interviews about the banking sector, about other aspects of the economy, society and politics on NewsClick. So keep watching, visit the YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button.